Hi everyone, thank you for joining our webinar. We are going to wait an additional two minutes to let additional attendees join and we'll begin shortly. All right, we'll go ahead and get started. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining our webinar titled Social Media Best Practices for the Aesthetic Professional. My name is Lauren McCallum, and I am the Marketing Manager for Crown Aesthetics, and I'll be helping to moderate today's webinar and discussion. Our webinar is scheduled for roughly one hour and will include a large number of pearls that we strongly believe will have tremendous value to you and your practice. Before we begin, let me share a few housekeeping items. During the webinar, all lines will be muted to avoid any background noise. We will also be recording this webinar and it will be available next week on crownaesthetics.com. If you'd like to ask a question, you can do so at any time during this presentation. To submit a question, please submit through the question box at the bottom right hand side of your window. We'll share questions at the end of the webinar, so feel free to submit them at any time. So let's go ahead and get started. Crown Aesthetics is delighted to introduce you to Samantha Knox, Senior Manager of Consumer Engagement. She comes to Crown with 10 years of digital marketing experience, spanning several industries and brands, such as Dr. Pepper, Snapple, Her Room, and Her Vision Skincare. With that, the floor is yours, Samantha. Thank you so much, Lauren, and thank you to everybody that took their time out today to attend our new webinar. I'm looking forward to presenting to everybody and receiving questions at the end. So let's go ahead and hop right in. So today's presentation, um, you'll learn a little bit about me, like what Lauren just said. I'll, I'll elaborate just a little bit more. Uh, we're going to talk about where to start on social media, uh, profile completion, branding, cadence, community management, hashtags, analytics, content best practices, easy content ideas, tips and tricks, some wonderful free social media tools, um, an example calendar, and then we'll touch a little bit on HIPAA and digital marketing. So um, like Lauren had said, I recently was at Revision Skincare for four years. Um, I did everything top to bottom digital marketing. So I led strategy, day-to-day -day execution of email, social e-com, e-tailer management, influencer partnerships, as well as the innovation of the digital department. So over at Crown now, I am uh, head of influencer and in organic social media. So if you happen to message Skinpin on Instagram, you might hear from me potentially. So just a few wonderful facts about social media today. So as of 2022, the top of 2022, there were nearly 4 billion total social media users across all platforms. The average person bounces between seven different social networks per month. And um, you know, you could think a little bit about what you do on a daily basis. You probably do the, do the same. And then the amount of time that adults use social media across all platforms is now higher than ever. It's 95 minutes per day. I probably use much more than the average person, but I can identify with that. And then of course, we all know that TikTok has become the fastest growing social network with a staggering 105% user growth rate in the US over the past two years. And I think we can all give COVID credit for that growth. So where to start, right? Social media is very important to market your business. It helps you connect with your customers, increase awareness about your brand, and of course, boost your leads and sales as an aesthetic practice. With so many social media platforms out there, where should you start? And all of these icons to the right, these are all viable social media networks that brands are active on. 
or, um, you know, consumers are active on on a daily basis. So I recommend if you're just getting started and your baby brand new to get started with Instagram and Facebook. So Instagram is one of the most popular social platforms out there. It helps businesses and owners succeed on, um, on a different level with video and photo sharing. And it, it comes with very several useful, very many uh, useful tools within the platform. So you can sell directly through Instagram if you have skincare, you can book appointments directly through Instagram um, and so on and so forth. There's, there's many different tools within that platform that make it very viable for aesthetic businesses. And then with more than uh, 2 billion users monthly, Facebook is still a very, very used platform. And it can of course help promote your services, increase customer support, and boost rec recognition with links, photos, and more. Um, so these, this is a starting point. I recommend everybody to start with Instagram and Facebook. It's the easiest place to start. They're connected, so on and so forth. Now, whenever you get comfortable with those two platforms, I recommend graduating over to TikTok. So as I said previously, TikTok has become the most influential social platform for brands in the last three years. And the, this video sharing platform really increases awareness for brands, products, services, trends, you name it, anything and everything in a viral frenzy. And they think we can all think to some products that went viral over TikTok over the past couple of years that sold out, um, that are still sold out, that have a viral following at this point. And because this content on TikTok is mostly short form, a high number of content is consumed daily. So that, that really means that people are, are stuck on the platform and they just keep going and they keep going and they keep going, much like Instagram Reels. So let's talk a little bit about uh, completing your profiles. So once you've got your Facebook and Instagram profiles activated, you really wanna ensure that they're 100% completed to ensure that you're providing enough information on your business to be recognized by a consumer. It's, it's, it, it's absolutely detrimental to a business whenever you finally hooked a consumer that you uh, that is interested in your aesthetic practice, they get to your page and they have no idea where you're located, what you do, what you offer, or how to contact you. So we always wanna ensure that the business logo is clean and clear and visible. The business category is selected. Your business name is, is clean and clear as well. Uh, your bio, uh, you know, about your business, what you offer and address is there. And then you have a link to your website. We use Linktree uh, for SkinPin and Linktree is a free tool that will allow you to put multiple links within your bio link. So for instance, if you click into SkinPins, it'll say, um, learn more about SkinPin, view before and afters, uh, book a treatment with a provider, so on and so forth. So I recommend aesthetic practices doing the same. You can create a link tree and it could be, you know, learn more about our practice, uh, book up, book an appointment, you know, purchase skincare, so on and so forth. Next up, we wanna ensure as you start creating content that your branding is consistent. This is very important. I always recommend to not deviate from the branding you're already using within your business, whatever colors that you're already using uh, in your marketing materials, whether that be flyers, um, branding on the outside of your business in general, you always wanna make sure that that <clears throat> is married. So make sure your logo is visible and clear on anything that you do use. You don't always have to put that on social products, but um, just ensure that that's always a easy to identify part of content you're creating if you choose to put it on there. Uh, make sure your brand colors are present and your fonts are consistent. So brand colors and content that can be within graphics or if you are posing skincare, and you have something teal nearby, you can throw that in if that's part of your branding. And brand standards are really important for businesses of all sizes, uh, not just small businesses, but large and so on and so forth. I mean, if we, if you think to um, like the colors orange and blue, uh, that, that definitely brings up tide in your mind. So we just wanna ensure that that happens across all businesses as well. My next tip is I recommend posting regularly. So that doesn't mean every single day. So you just need to establish a posting schedule, make a, make a starting goal of maybe like once a week, 
with content that you feel is important to the business. As you feel more comfortable with the process, you can increase to maybe two times per weekly every other day. And if you have enough content and you feel super comfortable, you can move to once per day, two times a day, whatever you feel like works for you. But don't feel overwhelmed to start posting every single day because that crunch to create content can be very overwhelming whenever you're first getting started. So once a week is totally fine if you're just getting started. Now, whenever we talk about content, we, we really want to avoid sharing garbage. And I know that that's a bit of a harsh term, but I always refer to content that people don't care about as garbage. So we wanna share content that your customers value. Think about whenever you're on social media, what you actually want to see. So we wanna keep content educational, entertaining. Don't go overly promotional or sales heavy unless you have something very important and big to share like a Black Friday event. And then we wanna use images and videos over graphics with words on them um, as those perform the best. Now, if you do have like a weekly um, promotion, you can always put that in your Instagram stories and share that in a highlight. But whenever we're talking about con in feed content, that needs to be very, um, very consumable, very quick, very digestible. And everything else can kind of be tucked away in stories or on your website or so on and so forth. I always recommend to nurture your audience. So respond quickly to comments and questions. So you should always be top of mind engaging with your audience. It can be a little bit time consuming if you've grown an audience on your pages, but just think that you know if they invest time in asking a question, you should invest time to answer just as if you would if a new patient walked into your office or called, because potentially that person is, is wanting to come into the office and learn more about a procedure, but they've just decided to take the social media avenue first. It's a lot easier. So always pay attention to the people that are commenting and that have questions because it's very easy to sell directly through social. So the next portion is all about hashtags. So hashtags are really important especially on instagram and there are a few myths that float around on instagram that you need to have like 30 hashtags and like if you don't have any then your content's not going to go throughout the algorithm and so on and so forth but truly you need to develop a very small hashtag cluster that pertains to your business to increase discovery on instagram so three to four tops five nothing more and then you always want to encourage your clients to engage with you on social with tagging and creating your own hashtag, like we have hashtag skin pen precision. So you could put a thing up in your office, a little note up in your office that said like, you know, tag us on Instagram, hashtag um, Kansas aesthetics office or something to that degree. Um, and I have a little bit of a fun um, note to talk about later about Instagram's best kept secrets. I'm looking forward to sharing that with you in a couple of minutes. This is my favorite slide. Uh, so we always want to pay attention to our analytics. So this just essentially means that on a very, very small level that the content that you have created that has the most engagement or the most likes and the most shares is going to be called your best content. And you should always try to replicate that success. Um, so try to create content along that vein to grow your channel. So there, I have a couple of examples here. So uh, for skin pin, I can see that my top liked and my top top commented on posts are uh, are kind of similar. So I want to I'm going to continue to create content along that vein. Like it's like um, recognizing patterns. So let's talk about content best practices. So this is a quick slide just to talk about the the what you should be doing whenever you're creating content. All of this stuff you should really keep in mind, like kind of a checklist whenever you're putting content out. So take clean and clear photos and videos. Make sure everything's nice and and tidy and clear, and you can everything's visible. No fuzzy pictures. Make captions meaningful and light. Ensure that there are no spelling or grammatical errors. 
uh, tag the brands, people, and places appropriately. So, um, of course, always tag SkinPin whenever you're doing something SkinPin related. We always want to see the content. Put all links in your Instagram or TikTok profile, not in post. Uh, unfortunately, links are not clickable within those platforms. Um, I recommend always including a link to whatever you're talking about on every single Facebook post because those CTAs or uh, call to action links are clickable on Facebook. I always like to recommend looking at similar businesses to gain inspiration for content. So that means looking at competitors, looking at indirect competitors and just seeing what kind of content they're focusing on, uh, doing a little bit of Googling to help build your calendar out. I always say leave logos, text and emojis off of photos when possible, but I understand some businesses prefer that. And then hashtags are best to use on Instagram and TikTok, not so much Facebook, just because the Facebook algorithm doesn't work the same as Instagram and TikTok. And then as I kind of hinted at before, I always recommend following local competition, the brands that you sell, and then consumers that, um, that, that choose to engage with you, like your best consumers, uh, just to help build your, your community and your audience. Now let's talk about Instagram best kept secrets of 2022. So some of this might be a little surprising. If you've heard maybe different, that's totally fine. Uh, but Instagram is actually starting to prioritize reels over in feed content. So this content, the reels will travel through a wider algorithm versus just being confined to your followers or a little bit of an explore page. Uh, reels are, are becoming um, just widespread and they have the uh, potential of become becoming a viral piece of content as well. So that's a wonderful tidbit. Um, if you have time, I always recommend uh, trying to make reels of procedures like skin pin um, or uh, skin skincare routines or so, so on and so forth um, with uh, trending sounds. So Instagram's also, this is from Instagram directly, recommends uh, to really only use three to four hashtags per post. And those hashtags should be uh, representative of the content you're putting out. So putting stuff like um, favorite uh, favorite cat or something, just because it has a lot of um, Instagram uh, pieces of content attached to it, doesn't mean that that's going to make that post successful. Their their API and their algorithms gotten really smart about paying attention to what kind of hashtags are related to the content. And if your hashtags match the content, the content's good, it'll go through the algorithm and it'll it'll hit more people. And then we want to prioritize engaging content uh, within your Instagram stories. So that means using polls and tappable items within Instagram stories versus just reposting or putting things uh, like flyers into them. And then I always recommend follow Instagram for business on Instagram for uh, more helpful tips from the source. They post a lot of really great helpful things and you can take it as the gospel because it's coming from the platform itself. So here are some super easy content ideas for any social media platform. So I have them separated by educational, informational and entertaining. So under educational, um, you could do something like a, what is skin pen or another treatment in your office? Uh, the video of that treatment process, uh, proper at home care after treatments. I feel a lot of consumers need help with that. Um, what is acne? What is, what does it lead to? You know, how to, how to deal with acne scars, um, seasonal skincare tips. So uh, summer skincare, winter skincare, so on and so forth. Um, what are skincare ingredients? I, I think consumers love to learn more, especially as we've seen niacinamide become more viral. I think consumers want to learn more about the different sizes of hyaluronic acid, so on and so forth. Um, and then how do we, how do you address acne scarring? I feel like a lot of people want to learn more about that because as skincare professionals, uh, skin pin is a great way to uh, to address acne scars. But I think we all know that um, a long term like uh, physician dispensed skincare regimen helps uh, alongside skin pin and so on and so forth. And then under the informational bucket, you could always do uh, staff introductions, their favorite products, their favorite treatments. Uh, what services or products are offered if you're bringing something new into the office, a new launch is happening, so on and so forth. Promotions, and then I think every consumer loves to see testimonials from other clients. 
you should have those on your website as well. Then under the entertaining bucket, we have staff favorites, like skincare and treat skincare and treatments on their own, uh, timely national months and days, like for instance, there's retinol day, vitamin C day, Botox day, uh, trending aesthetic related challenges or topics. So uh, like I'd spoken about, niacinamide was trending for, for a while, slugging was trending for a while. It's really, really great to see that kind of content from, the, from a professional source. Um, your opinions on the aesthetic related trends, not everybody loves slugging. Um, media mentions from your favorite brands, that's another great thing to, to post. And then aesthetic related memes, I think a lot of people love seeing those. Like if you are if you had a flip phone in the 90s, it's time to, to get Botox. We love seeing those fun pieces of content. And then facial extraction videos, those are a love-hate. <laughs> um, relationship content pieces, but I, I think we, we all know that Dr. Pimple Popper uh, has garnered her platform off of that type of content, so it can be uh, very engaging. So this is a quick slide on four free social media tools to help you get started and going. So the first one is Canva. So if you're not a graphic designer, the whole thought of creating content is very, um, very threatening and kind of fearful for you. Canva has everything you need to get started. You uh, have a million different fonts you can choose from. You can find your brand colors in there. There are templates for content. You just have to um, throw it all in and download it and you're all done. And then maybe you're like, oh, I don't have time to like get pictures of things. And like, maybe I just need uh, something to put in the background. You can go down to Pexels and Pexels has video as well as photo content. That's all free that you can utilize on your websites, on social media or anything that you really need, just like quick royalty free images for. Uh, maybe as a placeholder while you're getting some photography done. And then next up, we have Hootsuite. So Hootsuite, you can create and schedule your social media calendar ahead of time. So let's say you get your calendar put together, it's all listed out, and then you're like, okay, I have the content done, but you don't want to sit there every single day and be like, oh, I have to post something every day at, at lunchtime. You can just schedule it through Hootsuite, make your life a lot easier. And then last but not least, we have copy.ai. So once again, you may be a very, very busy person and you don't have time to really deal with writing copy and the content and so on and so forth. You can actually just go on copy.ai, give it some um, basic information and it'll write a caption for you. So these four tools here are very powerful and can get you right off the ground immediately uh, whenever it comes to creating social content. So next up, um, I wanted to touch a little bit on our um, our digital asset management tool that we have available to our practices, our aesthetic professionals. So currently, you may know that we are on, on this platform called Swivel that you can access all of our marketing materials to. Well, very soon, we'll be moving over to Media Valet, and your territory manager will be able to share all that uh, login information with you, just as we've done with Swivel in the past. So Media Valet, just like Swivel, will be your one-stop shop for all things skin pen at your fingertips. So you'll find content such as marketing flyers, marketing graphics, forms, brand guidelines, before and after photos, practice resources. There's gonna be some social content is there in there as well. Everything that you need to be able to promote skin pen properly to a consumer, you'll find in there. And what I recommend is just simply, once you get that link from your territory manager, just bookmark that guy and then use the provided password and you instantly have access to our huge library. And it's super easy. You just download materials and in a single click, you would go to the piece of content that you're interested in. You just click the download button and it's, it's ready for you to use right there on your computer or your phone, wherever you are. And if you wanna make any kind of alterations to it, you can do so in, in Canva. Like if you wanna throw your logo on something, you're more than happy to, more than, more than welcome to. So here's an example social media calendar for July that I created. So this is just a just to show you how I kind of plan stuff out, you know, just opening the kimono a little bit to show you guys um, my process. So whenever I'm working with my team to create a social media calendar, I like to physically look at the calendar and put in start putting things in and ideas so I can work towards creating the content. 
So here you can see um, for this particular calendar, I have something posting every single day. And I've kind of done it from the voice of an aesthetic office. So you can see every Friday, there's an aesthetic meme. Um, every other week, there's something like a before and after or in an office event. Um, and this is just to help inspire you to, to, to show you that you have a lot going on in your office that could potentially be fantastic social media content. So real quick, I did wanna to touch on HIPAA and social media marketing. So this is really important because uh, the, all of your practices should have a, essentially a medical portion to it. So much like email, it's very important that your social posts or ads on social don't use any patient information or PHI of any kind without express consent. This is a HIPAA violation if you do so. Um, healthcare organizations must implement a HIPAA social media policy to reduce the risk of privacy violations. So that just means, you know, we're going to agree that we're not gonna put our, uh, our customer email database into social media before any, by any means, and we're gonna enact a process that says, um, like a release of some sort that says like, dear patient, do you give me your consent to put this on social media, sign here, so on and so forth. Um, the HIPAA privacy rule prohibit, prohib, yeah, prohibits the disclosure of EPHI on social media networks without the express consent of patients. And this really includes text about specific patients, as well as images or videos that could result in a patient being identified. And it's 100% okay if they have given you their written or verbal consent, you just have to be able to track that for your legal needs. Um, and then in such circumstances, PHI can only be used for the purpose specifically mentioned in the consent form that you've gotten from them. So if, if, if a consumer says, yeah, you can post my before and after on social media, that doesn't mean you can start making printouts of it and so on and so forth. You have to really specify that content use. Um, social media channels can be used for posting health tips, details of events, new medical research, bios of staff for marketing messages provided that no PHI in, is included in those posts without consent. And then uh, as, as stated above, you should really create a well-documented social strategy that clearly outlines what team, team members can and cannot post just to make things easier to, to, to handle within the uh, office structure. And then um, I always recommend holding a routine training session to ensure that your team is aware of best practices and they can ask questions live if they have any. And this just helps keep things legal and safe within the, uh, within the use of social media. So I also wanted to touch quickly on before and after submissions. So we 100% love to see and want your before and after images from skin pen procedures to showcase your practices. Um, we have a template that you can use to gather patient consent, as I just spoke about the HIPAA consent. Um, and this allows us to showcase your patient's great results on social, our website, and on print materials. And then we will, of course, give you any credit for photos that which we um, have gathered that help drive patients into your practice. And we are also giving away free branded figs uh, scrub tops to practices that send in the signed consent form along with high resolution before and after images and the number of skin can treatments the treatment received. And uh, just really quick, images and consent form can be sent to photos at crownesthetics.com for review and for approval. So if you have some, some in your back pocket right now and you'd like some free fix scrub, scrub tops, um, feel free to take down this email. Email us right now and say, hey, I have some before and afters. Let me send them to you. I want my free scrubs. And um, our amazing uh, marketing manager, Lauren, will be able to help you with that. And I'm looking forward to um, seeing those as well so I can post them on social. Now, last but not least, we have our handles and our hashtags. So we will be able to see your content. So we want you, as, as our aesthetic partners, our business partners, we want you to engage with us on social and we'll engage back, of course. And most of the time we find great content and if it's on label, we uh, repost with tagged credit. We always message you and ask for permission first. And then here are handles and hashtags to ensure that we see your uh, amazing skin pen or progen posts. 
So uh, Skinpin has an Instagram and a TikTok and a Facebook. Progen only has an Instagram and then Crown Aesthetics as a whole has an Instagram and a Facebook and our LinkedIn. So I look forward to seeing your tag posts and uh, being able to share those out in the coming months. And that is it for now. Perfect. Thank you so much, Samantha. We really appreciate it. And all of that information was incredibly helpful and beneficial. Um, so as promised, we do have time now for some questions. As a reminder, if you do have questions, please put them in the box at the bottom right hand of your screen. And um, we'll go ahead and get started. We've gotten quite a few in so far. Um, so I will kick those off. Um, what types of content have you found perform well on SkinPin's Instagram channel? Great question. The best content that performs on the SkinPin uh, channels are before and afters, really, really, really astonishing before and afters, and then reels that show the procedure in its whole and gives a little bit of information behind it. Those always do amazingly well. Perfect. Um, now, do you think that social media is a good platform to get a new patient into your practice, or do you typically find that it's just people already attending the practice that follow the social media channels? It's a little bit of both. Really good question. Um, it's a little bit of both. I find that um, some, uh, well, actually a good majority of aesthetic practices have a, have a good influx of potential patients and leads through social media because things can go viral. Um, people are, you know, being influenced from different pieces of media and then they start looking up practices in their area. And I'll tell you, um, you know, as like baby Botox and fillers become much more popular for the younger generations, they learn about this stuff on TikTok. They end up getting on, you know, Instagram and other other platforms and trying to find um, aesthetic practices that perform those procedures. And they want to see before and afters. They want to see results. And then, you know, if you have a really nice presence on social, things are clean and and clear and beautiful. You're going to earn them as a as a customer uh, for a consultation uh, quickly. Perfect. Um, here is the next one. Sorry, I'm trying to scroll through all of these. Um, how would you recommend getting followers to engage more and comment on your posts? I recommend asking questions, um, creating content that garners engagement. So giveaways are great. Um, you know, what are, what do you, what's your, I'm um, sorry, my, my brain stopped working. What's your desert island skincare um, product? Anything that can, uh, that's asking a question, that's asking for engagement, you're always going to get better engagement on those. Um, and that's why I say try to post things more in, informational and entertainment uh, based versus promotions because promotions are great and all, but um, well, most of the time those aren't going to garner engagement no matter how great the, the promotion is. Perfect. Um, the next question here, I think I can answer. Um, for the free figs, can it be with the Evo pin or do they have to be with the skin pin? Um, we would absolutely love to see any Evo before and after pictures that you have as well. So um, please send them over to the uh, email address that was provided, photos at chronostatic.com, and we will um, gladly review those. But yes, please send skin pin, Evo, any before and after pictures with those two devices, and we would love to review those. Thank you. Um, the next question, how would you recommend gaining more followers? So I recommend gaining new followers by implementing a few different um, tactics. So you can um, try and reach out and engage to different people in social media. So you can find other uh, like popular influencers on social on social media within your area. You know, you can off, you can engage with them, offer them free treatments and see if they are interested in doing a post with you tag. That's a great way of getting new followers, but that's kind of leaking into influencer um, activations. Um, you can also uh, do giveaways. That's always great uh, with the with a CTA of, you know, tag your friend. Both of you guys must be following us to get the prize, so on and so forth. And then also um reels on instagram specifically are reaching such a such a huge chunk of the world right now and those always help skin pin get new followers and engagement perfect 
and this kind of goes hand in hand, and I think I know this answer, would you suggest using bots to get more followers? Absolutely not. And let me tell you why. Instagram is smart. They have figured out what accounts are using bots and you will get shadow banned and your content will not be shown to anybody and your, um, your platforms will, will essentially die. And it takes a long time to dig them out of that hole. Um, same thing with using too many hashtags. If you use too many hashtags that are not related to your content, you can also get shadow banned by Instagram. And, I, and I've dealt with that firsthand. Uh, whenever I took on the revision skincare platforms, we were shadow banned because of that reason. Perfect. Uh, the next question, are we going to get this presentation via email after the fact? So yes, we will be sending this out probably early next week. So everyone that registered will get a copy of this presentation. So I'm glad to hear that you guys have found this information as informative as I have. So great question. Um, next one. What days are best to post on social media? Is there a day or a time that you would most recommend? So this is a big debate within the social media community, especially amongst uh, social media experts. Um, I personally have no analytics to back up that there is a good or bad day. Um, I just recommend trying to avoid the weekends because there are more people on social media during the weekdays. And that's kind of the only thing that I can give you. Uh, it doesn't matter whenever you post your content, what time of day, because it's going to go through the algorithm as it would normally do. Um, so that is, that's my input. I, I just, I, I avoid weekends and try not to post stuff at 5 a.m. <laughs> Perfect. It's good advice. Um, the next question, I think it's, um, they're looking for some advice, but it says the practice I'm at only posts to Instagram and wants stories made every day for surgical and spa services. I'm feeling a little overwhelmed by the amount of daily content, but worry if I start posting less, it will affect what they have built so far. Any advice? Um, yeah, I would, I would recommend speaking to your, to your leadership and really getting to the bottom of what is, um, what what's truly the priority and what's the what's the overall goal from the amount of content because it's really easy to get caught up in like we need to post every single day because the more content the more people see the better but sometimes that's that's not always the case so i always recommend trying to to sit down with leadership build a strategy together and come to uh, an agreement of the amount of content and the purpose behind it because we don't always want to put uh junk so to so to speak junk out there we want to put the highest quality most engaged with engaged with content that we possibly can out onto the the web so that that's my um that's my that's my recommendation and i understand that it's a little bit of a rock and a hard place because it's hard to um it's it's kind of hard to have those conversations but if you're feeling overwhelmed and you're maybe feeling some burnout from this content creation i think it's important for your for your mental health to to move forward with that conversation okay perfect um can you use TikTok content on instagram and vice versa a hundred percent a hundred and twenty nine percent um the the reels and the TikToks are completely interchangeable i just recommend uh updating the music so your uh your whatever piece of audio that you're using on the platform that also affects how it, it gets mixed into the algorithm so for instance if you just take the reel that you've chosen a piece of music for and throw it on TikTok without choosing that piece of music again you might be missing out on some uh some impressions okay perfect and this is kind of along the same lines should the content on Facebook be different than on Instagram is it okay to share the same pictures and videos at the same time on both Instagram and Facebook I say it absolutely is, especially if you're just getting started um, and you don't have, you don't want separate channels uh, strategies because it doesn't serve a purpose yet because you're so baby brand new. Um, there are the majority of businesses I see do have, um, do post the same content. There are some, some things that might be a little bit different, like videos, obviously uh, different size videos on Facebook uh, look different. You can have links, so on and so forth. I just recommend um, if you're going to post the exact same uh, pieces of actual graphic or photo content from Instagram to Facebook, on Facebook, you really need to be including a link in every single post that uh, so you have a, a reason for them to leave the platform if they do come across the content. Perfect. 
Um, how do you know if you have been shadow banned? You will see a huge drop in engagement and a, a great way to see if you've been shadow banned is post a piece of content with a not very popular um, hashtag, switch profiles and try to find your post within that hashtag um, search. And if you don't see your post in that hashtag search, your stuff has been shadow banned. Okay, perfect. Um, can we use the before and after photos of patients that had skin pin from your previous patients' crown aesthetic accounts? Um, this, I can take this one really quick, Samantha. We do, um, on the marketing portal that Samantha referred to, we have some before and after pictures that are available and um, you are able to use those images however you see fit. So feel free to log into the marketing portal. If you don't have access, either reach out to your Crown Aesthetics um, territory manager or you can email customer service at customer service at crownaesthetics.com and they can get you signed up for that. So you are welcome to use any and all of the resources that are available within that platform. Um, and then Lauren, uh, what, what is your, uh, what's your recommendation for accounts um, reposting our posts that are before and afters on our social media? Yes, you are welcome to repost our content as well. So um, I don't know if you've got a reposting tool that you would recommend people to use. I recommend just using like Regram or, you know, if you're at a computer, you can just download them and put them into your calendar and schedule them. Perfect. No, that sounds great. Um, should you always have something on your story or is it, is it okay to go a day or two without anything on it? You can absolutely go a day or two without something on your story. It's, it's, totally the same thing, you know, you should be posting. Um, if you do post every single day, it needs to be engaging, worthwhile content, otherwise people will start skipping your stories. Perfect. Um, do you recommend hiring someone to manage social media or is this something all of the staff can chip in and do? That is a case by case basis. So I recommend hiring somebody so they can be fully focused on it, especially if you're a very high volume growing practice. You don't want your estheticians, your injectors, your nurse practitioners being bogged down by trying to take care of content whenever they're supposed to be back to back with clients. Um, and I believe that it is a collaborative process between if you hire somebody and the rest of the staff but we shouldn't, uh, just, just from the logistics standpoint, we shouldn't be having our estheticians um, try to perform a treatment <laughs> and get content at the same time. Perfect. Um, next question. Do you feel having a YouTube channel is important? Could you store all of your videos you've previously posted on other sources here too? YouTube for aesthetic practices um, is is not as effective as you would think it would be. I think that if you are going to have a YouTube channel, that's best if you're a single esthetician trying to build your own brand or a single doctor trying to build your own brand. I mean, um, I mean, a lot of brands don't even uh, like skincare or, or um, uh, sun care or whatever brands you can think of. They're not even that successful on YouTube. Um, so, and then whenever you think about, you know, taking content from different platforms and putting it on, putting them on YouTube, they don't really work because, uh, you know, Facebook and Instagram and TikTok are very short form pieces of content. And then if you try to put them on YouTube, YouTube prefers a different size, a uh, different long form content, so on and so forth. So I recommend if you do want to go over into the YouTube land, uh, you have a completely separate channel strategy for YouTube. Perfect. Um, now, what advice would you give to someone just starting their practice in social media presence? I recommend just trying to plan out as much as possible. If you're if you're sitting down and doing a bunch of business planning um, already, you should be taking the same steps with social media, trying to get planned out per quarter or even further, figuring out you know what is going to be happening in the office, what kind of events, you know how how your business is gonna be portrayed in office needs to be portrayed on social media. And then all of these best practices and kind of first steps that I've put together are perfect for getting started. 
And then if you're the type of business that's um, that has maybe some star um, uh, injectors or star star estheticians, trying to incorporate um, them into your content as much as possible as well to help boost everything works as well, because they're usually great sources for um, uh, their expertise. Perfect. Um, now this is just a comment. So thank you so much for the comment, but they said, um, I recommend Tailwind app. It's free and a mix of Hootsuite and Canva. It shares to Instagram and Facebook and lets you change the description for each platform and recommends hashtags based on your caption. Um, you. So perfect, thanks for sending that in. Um, we've got just a couple more and then we will wrap it up. Um, one of the questions is, uh, any cute taglines for a lunch and learn we are planning? Um, that might be something fun to use that um, content creator you were referring to, Samantha. Yeah, the, the copy AI, yeah, yes. probably. Yes, I wish um, I could think of something fun off the top of my head. If I do, I'll email it to you. Yeah, maybe like, Snack a snack and skin pen or something. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. No, that's fine. I like it. Um, how do we get the HIPAA template? Um, we will be sending out a copy of this deck following the presentation. Um, we can't actually tell you specifically what to put on your HIPAA form. Um, that will be up to each individual practice and provider, but feel free to reference that if you have any questions or are needing some inspiration with wording. Um, we are looking to hire someone for social media. How do we find someone who's knowledgeable in this industry? I recommend um, Googling as much as possible. Um, and oddly enough, there are a lot of boutique uh, digital marketing agencies that are probably in your area and, and really only service uh, small and to medium to large businesses in your area that may have that expertise just waiting uh, to be used. So I recommend reaching out to small agencies in your area, getting you know time on their calendar to explore and learn more about them. And then they can properly, um, I guess, sell you in on their uh, their expertise. Okay, perfect. Um, someone was asking for the name of the recommended app in the previous question. It was Tailwind. Um, T A I L W I N T D. Sorry. Um, all right. How do you get a similar appearance of content with different videos and photos being used? By your brand colors using the same filters on everything do people use Lightrooms? so um i don't actually use filters on anything um everything that that is created is usually done um in like the same kind of brightness if that makes sense like the same clarity the same brightness the same kind of white balance uh, there are some creators that do use lightroom if you're trying to uh create a a, a similarly similarly colored Quilt if it's all photos or all videos and you can't that's a little bit of an advanced technique but you can't always look into um look into those uh presets for content perfect um and then one last question and then we'll go ahead and wrap it up um do you recommend boosting to help get it a bigger reach yes i, I do i think I, I i'm of the belief that that paid media kind of rules all um so it, it any 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 business kind of worth worth their salt has a working organic and a working paid media strategy for them especially if you're trying to you know reach people within your area i totally recommend taking your best content and boosting it especially on instagram um but that that is a um that's a, another advanced technique <laughs> 
Okay, perfect. Well, thank you so much again for your time today, Samantha, and thank each of you for joining us today. I'm sh I hope that you guys found this webinar as um, informative and as beneficial as I did. I believe this concludes our webinar, and um, we, as a reminder, will be sending out a recording early next next week. Um, we also encourage you to reach out to your local Crown Aesthetics representative or contact customer service at 888-372-3982 to discuss any additional ideas or for ways to draw patients into your practice. Thank you all again for your participation and on behalf of the entire Crown Aesthetics team, have a wonderful rest of your Thursday.